Good morning. My name is uh, Daniel Cornwall. I'm the um, Internet and Technology Consultant with the Alaska State Library. And today we're having a webinar to learn more about one of the many um, Internet tutorial resources out on the web, uh, Tech Boomers, which was founded by Steve Black, who is our presenter today. And he will be and it's an interesting story of how it got started. I'll let him address that. Want to take care of two housekeeping notes, and that is, well, actually three housekeeping notes. If you have a microphone, can I get you to mute it if you're not talking? We seem to be right on the border of a group where people could ask their questions locally. And if we get much larger or if we have a lot of feedback, we may have to uh, mute people and do all of our uh, questions from chat. So that's one. And you can mute yourself if you mouse over your name. You should see a little uh, microphone. And if you um, right click on it or click on it, yes, you'll get muted just like I see people doing. So that's one note. The next housekeeping note is if you're not seeing the chat window, um, you want to go up towards the top of your screen on the right and click on the gray chat button. Uh, the chat window will open and the chat button will turn blue. And the last little bit that I have is uh, in the chat window where you type stuff, it may say send to uh, me or moderators privately, if you click on the down arrow next to the send to, you can change that to everyone. And I do encourage people um, to make comments along the way. And, you know, um, we hadn't exactly arranged how Steve was going to stop for questions, but either he can stop for questions or you can type your questions in the chat and we'll address them as they come up. And so with those housekeeping details out of the way, I'd like to go ahead and turn it over to Steve. Well, thank you very much, uh, Daniel. It's, it's really good to be here, and I uh, appreciate the opportunity to uh, share the, the Tech Boomer story and um, kind of how we're uh, trying to support uh, digital literacy um, around the world and especially in North America. Um, it's been very exciting for our team since we launched in early um, February or early 2015 this year. Um, we've been really trying to get ourselves out there and meet different people in this space that have similar goals and values and build relationships and just figure out how we can all really work together. And um, just after we launched, I went to a library association conference, um, called the Ontario Library Association here in here in Canada, based on the recommendation of a of a friend um, who learned about tech boomers and mentioned how uh, librarians and libraries would uh, potentially find it very, very useful. Um, and I went there and met a lot of really great people. And right away, I saw a lot of, a lot of opportunity to, to, to partner with them and to work together uh, in a lot of different ways. And so this presentation is really about um, sharing some of those ideas and explaining what Tech Boomers is and how it can be useful for, for libraries. So hopping into it, um, just to kind of go over at a high level what will be covered in the webinar. Um, first off, the importance of digital literacy. Um, I'm sure everybody here um, obviously understands, you know, that digital literacy is important in, in a lot of different ways, but I just want to share some of the ideas that, that we have and about the different types of websites that are out there that we teach people how to use and how those can be useful. Uh, then we'll get into just describing what Tech Boomers is and who can use it, and then I'll go through a, a quick site tour to kind of show you guys, uh, I'm sure a lot of you have checked out Tech Boomers, but just to take you through some of the features of the site. Uh, would be probably a good idea. And then kind of the main topic is how libraries can leverage Tech Boomers to teach digital literacy. Um, so I have a number of kind of slides on that. And then we're going to have a poll um, at the end um, on our last webinar we did, or actually the last two. Um, it was, the, the attendees really liked that they got to choose um, which course that we're going to release next. So we'll, we'll have a little poll at the end and let you guys decide um, an upcoming course for us. So getting into it, um, the importance of digital literacy. Um, I think we can all agree, probably for the most part, that digital literacy can improve lives uh, in many ways. Um, and that's for people of all ages, for sure. Um, obviously, one of the biggest aspects is the social aspect. You know, using sites like Facebook and Skype 
um, to stay connected with friends and family. Facebook too, you know, if, I'm, if we're thinking about um, especially older adults and, and seniors, um, Facebook is a great way to connect with, you know, stay connected with friends and family, see uh, pictures of grandchildren and, and stay connected, send messages, chat and all that good stuff. Skype is an amazing service. Obviously, there are a lot of um, um, phone services out there on the internet, different apps and that, but Skype is obviously one of the most popular. But, you know, just the, the ability to be able to video chat with, with family and grandchildren across the country is just an amazing thing um, and such a, a better alternative to, uh, you know, the long distance phone bills uh, that can get pretty pricey. Um, other social websites to meet new people with similar interests. Um, Real-time news and information is an amazing thing as well. Um, it wasn't too long ago when, um, you know, you'd have to either tune in to the, the 6 o'clock news or the nightly news and the morning news, so you'd have to wait a number of hours or read the newspaper the next day to find out about what's going on in the world. And sites like Twitter change that and, you know, totally around so that, you know, if you're online and connected, you know, you'll learn about what's going on in your community and around the world in, in real time. So lot, lots of great social services out there that can improve quality of life. Um, the internet and apps and technology in general is a great way. There's so many well, different apps and websites uh, that you can use to save money. Um, free and less expensive entertainment. Um, Netflix is a, one of my, my favorite ones that I, I recommend to people that are new to the internet. Um, a lot of people are still paying um, cable bills up to 50 or $100. And Netflix is a way to, um, you know, stream TV online, obviously, and movies, um, what, you know, whatever you want, whenever you want, with no commercials, and it's only like $8.99 is the, the lowest package per month um, compared to really expensive cable bills. That's, that's just such an amazing, amazing service, and there are other solutions out there, um, video streaming, other than Netflix as well. Um, using um, classified sites to save money, um, to buy things, buy used goods, um, also to sell you know, your used goods like eBay and, and Craigslist are, are great services. Uh, discount and coupon websites, of course, like Groupon, Living Social, um, travel booking websites like Airbnb and Expedia, um, just a lot of different websites that if, if you know how to use them, you can save a lot of money, uh, um, which, is, which is great. And one thing I actually mentioned, uh, intended to mention um, early on was, um, you know, as far as asking questions, yeah, please do. I'd like this uh, webinar to be as interactive as possible. Um, I think, yeah, probably the best way to be is to post them in chat, so feel free at any time. I'll keep an eye on the chat window as I go through uh, the slide deck and the tour, um, and I'll just answer them as, as we go. So if you have any ideas or questions or suggestions about anything I'm talking about, please feel free to, uh, to share it in the chat window, and I'll um, keep an eye on it for sure. Uh, another great um, aspect of you know, digital literacy on the internet is that you can basically learn anything online um, for free. You know, the fact that there are university level courses on sites like Coursera and Udacity and uh, Khan Academy, I mean, that's just amazing. Um, you know, to, to get a, essentially to get a university education, level education, you don't need to pay, you know, $8,000 in tuition a semester, or you know, I guess that's maybe per year, but, you know, just to have that information at your, your fingertips, that type of education is just fantastic. Um, services like Google, Wikipedia to find answers to any and all questions as long as you know uh, how to kind of filter and, and process and know which information you can actually trust. Um, that's just an amazing thing. You know, anytime, um, you know, you ha you're having a debate with someone about, oh, who is that, you know, that, that, that actor in that movie or, you know, any types of questions like that, you know, Google will solve that for you pretty quickly and resolve that debate. Um, you know, you can use uh, sites like StumbleUpon and so many others to discover new interests and passions and learn about them. And one of my favorite websites, uh, my girlfriend and I, every Tuesday night, we have a uh, TED Talk Tuesday that we call it. Um, it basically, uh, they have videos and they have blog posts as well about what's going on um, with the world of technology and science and many other um, different uh, niches as well as far as you know just like innovators and what's going on in the world when it comes to advancement and even psychology and all these amazing topics um, you can watch those videos for free online um, oh i see we have a question from jessica she asked um, how tech boomers makes money we have a slide on that um, actually i added that slide at the request of uh, daniel when he saw my last webinar so uh, we'll definitely uh, get to that very soon and just so you know jessica i think you sent that message to me privately um, so, as Daniel mentioned, you'll see below the chat window, um, or in the middle of the chat window, I guess, where it says send to. 
if you want your questions to be seen by everybody, make sure that that is set to everyone. So moving on, uh, so yeah, I will definitely answer that very soon. I think it's about two or three slides away. Um, aside from that, technology can just make life easier in so many ways, whether it's shopping from your own home on sites like Amazon, uh, files, file storage, and other cloud-based apps. Uh, a couple weeks ago, my laptop uh, basically just stopped working. And obviously, you know, I'm running Tech Boomers, and we're sharing all these files, uh, content, and planning documents and that. And had I not had all of them stored on Dropbox, I would have lost them all, which would have been obviously very devastating. And even I would have lost a lot of the webinar, um, the slide deck, for example, I would have lost, which would have been, you know, very painful. So, you know, uh, cloud-based apps are just, you know, make life easier in a lot of ways. Uh, family monitoring apps are, are really becoming um, very popular for the aging in place movement, um, which for those of you who might not be familiar, that's basically um, older adults and seniors and, um, you know, um, people wanting to stay at home and, and live at home instead of going to a retirement living center or a long-term care facility. And so many different technologies are making um, that more possible um, to monitoring health and wellness um, of family members and also monitoring kids. And, you know, if you have children, there's different apps for that as well. And then two of my favorites, Google Maps for directions, uh, can't go wrong. Um, basically, if you have a, you know, a Google Maps on your phone, it's very, very difficult to get lost. Um, sometimes I still find a way to do it, but um, <laughs> I blame Google for that, although I probably shouldn't. <laughs> um, and then Yelp, I use that site all the time to find uh, places to eat um, when I'm traveling. Uh, it's just a great service altogether for restaurants and other types of um, stores and businesses to find them locally. So those are a lot of kind of different advantages and all the ways that technology and the internet can improve life. Um, but something else that is super important to mention is that digital literacy um, uh, will protect you online. Um, these days, whether people like it or not, you know, everything is starting to go online. Um, here in Canada, there are a number of uh, forms for taxes and, and different types of um, government forms and that that are going online and you have to, you know, connect to the internet and go to their website and submit the forms online these days. And obviously that, you know, what you're submitting a lot of the time is very sensitive materials. Um, so, you know, if you basically need to be on a computer um, and you're definitely going to want to have your computer safe and protected. So, um, you know, the first step with that is just understanding the dangers of the Internet when it comes to online safety and online privacy, uh, two separate things, but also very important. We have courses for uh, both of those, two on safety, actually, and then one on privacy on Tech Boomers. Uh, using proper protection when it comes to your computer, um, having proper antivirus software installed. There's other tools like password managers out there that um, just make storing your passwords and using um, strong passwords a lot easier. I use one. I use one called LastPass. We also have one that we actually promote on TechBoomers called Sticky Password, which is a is a great solution for a password manager. Um, Using best practices when it comes to online safety and privacy, um, you know, knowing which websites you can trust just by learning. Um, and um, yeah, those types of things, just using best practices and staying up to date with, you know, what's going on with when it comes to new Internet threats and risks. You guys probably all remember a Heartbleed that happened uh, not too long ago where the passwords uh, were no longer secure on a variety of really high authority and trusted websites. and it's just important to stay up to date to have a, a source, whether it's staying connected to Twitter or a blog or Facebook, um, you know, just to see, you know, to stay up to date with that information is really important to protect your, um, yourself online. I see Nancy has a question. Uh, please name some of the family monitoring apps. Um, I have a list of them. So uh, I think at the end of the webinar, I'll see if I can find that list. Um, if not, maybe I'll post it on the digitallearn.org website later on. Uh, there are a ton of them, and I've, uh, we don't teach people how to use any of them on Tech Boomers right now. We're focused more on websites, but we'll, uh, yeah, I'll, I'll, why don't I do that? I'll post it on digitallearn.org. If you're not familiar with that website, I highly recommend you check it out. Um, it's just a, a great way to connect and communicate with other people that are involved in digital literacy. And uh, Susan has a question, um, is the PowerPoint um, deck available? It will be. At the end of this presentation on the last slide, there will be a link to a site called slideshare.net. It's already fully uploaded, so you can uh, download it there and 
and uh, access it there, or just view it from the from your web browser if, you, if that's what you want to do. So that that uh, link will come at the end of the webinar. So moving on, I guess if we can all kind of agree that digital literacy is important for a variety of, of reasons, you know, the next question is, well, how do you teach it? Um, you know, given the the attendees today, obviously there are uh, a ton of great uh, ways to do it in the live setting, and we at Tech Boomers, we um, we're really, and this is kind of an important point to make, we're not trying to replace the live training environment and the live classes at libraries and other nonprofits. We we think it's just so important to have that initial engagement and to, you know, especially for people that are brand new to computers, to have that one-on-one -on -one training or that classroom environment, and even to have it on an ongoing basis. We built Tech Boomers to really work with that, and we'll talk about some of the ways that we're trying to help um, people in the digital literacy space um, make their lives easier with our content. So we'll get into that in a little bit. But so what is Tech Boomers? Tech Boomers offers free courses that teach people how to use currently how to use popular websites and apps. Um, in the near future, we will be adding uh, how to, uh, courses around how to use programs like Microsoft Office, Word, Photoshop. We have a whole list of ones that we want to get to, but right now we're really focused on websites and apps because that's where we saw the biggest gap in, in the market. And there's a lot of people searching for um, content about how to use websites and apps and um, there isn't a lot of great content out there right now. So that's where we're starting with. We just have a, a pretty small team right now. We have one full-time writer that uh, works super hard to produce one course a week. Um, and we'll also in the future get, get into devices, uh, smartphones, um, cameras, TVs. We'd love to get into that stuff. Those, those devices are probably further, maybe mid-2016. But we'll see how everything goes. Uh, that's a, a long time away in the life of a, a new company. So. Um, another aspect that Tech Boomers provide, I guess a feature or a function, I guess would be a better way to put it, is that as we add more and more courses under different categories, and as you see at the, across the top of our website, our, our menu is basically a list of different types of websites aside from Internet 101, which is um, courses about just general information about the Internet. But as, as people surf the different categories and the different pages and uh, categories of websites on Tech Boomers, it's a great way to learn and discover new types of websites. So for example, if someone comes to Tech Boomers to learn how to use Facebook, then they get clicking around and they see some of the options for online shopping. Uh, maybe online shopping is something they've always wanted to do, and now they have a list of, I think we maybe have about eight or nine different online shopping websites, um, and they can kind of learn how to use them. So it's a great way to discover it. Initially, I, I referred to, and my, uh, my team referred to Tech Boomers from this aspect to be as like the yellow pages of the internet. You know, you have a general idea for a type of business that you want, or in this case, a type of website, and um, you can use Tech Boomers to, you know, to find different types of options for each of those. So why do we build Tech Boomers? Um, the idea came from helping teach my parents how to use websites, uh, like mostly Facebook and a little bit of Skype and Netflix. Um, I've been all, always been the, the tech go-to person for my family, mostly my parents, but also my aunts and uncles. I sit down with sit down with them one on one and um, point out different things and they take notes in their in a little notebook. Um, but I, the thing is, I was always around to actually to teach them. I was running a company back then, so I looked online for a resource, um, a Coursera style website that they could basically self learn, and I can help them fill in the blanks when they have questions and they're confused about things. And when I am home, I can you know sit down with them one on one and teach them. I didn't really find anything. There are a number of, as Daniel mentioned, other really solid resources out there. Um, GCFLearnFree.org, I'm sure a lot of you know about it. Um, so I'd highly recommend that one um, as well. They focus, they have really great tutorials and courses on um, things like operating systems and uh, how to use programs. They, they touch upon websites, mostly social media. Um, so we're trying to really fill the gap that they're not hitting by teaching people how to use all types of websites beyond just social media. Um, so yeah, back to how the idea came. Um, so what I did find, aside from a couple sites like GCF Learn Free, um, but when it comes to website tutorials, um, I found a lot of videos on YouTube and articles on sites like WikiHow and other user-generated content sites. Um, but the problem was most of them were out of date. Uh, if you search something like how to create a Facebook account, you'll see a video in the top 10 results on Google that's five years old, which for someone like my mom coming to Facebook for the first time to follow that video, I mean, Facebook's changed their design 
many, many times since then. So that video is essentially useless to her. And some of the other content that's even maybe a little more um, or a little not so out of date is just not detailed enough or not necessarily written with an audience like my parents in mind with relevant examples of why a website's useful and in a non-tech language. So um, with all that in mind, I've personally always looked for a, a more purposeful entrepreneur opportunity. I've started a couple companies in the past and I've always wanted, like I said, yeah, something more purposeful where we're, we're, we're out there helping people. And uh, Tech Boomers um, was just, you know, such an opportunity in my mind at the time to do that. And um, so that's really why we built Tech Boomers. Um, Deb has a comment. Um, Linda is way too technical for our users, but may want to learn software programs. Yeah. Um, we have basic level courses for office programs developed in-house, but they're waiting lists to attend for sure and expensive. Yeah. Um, Linda is a great resource that's definitely for more advanced users. They, they really cover some high, high tech topics, even how to like, how to program, how to create websites. Um, Linda would probably be like if, if, uh, let's say the digital literacy beginner classes at your libraries are, you know, uh, high school, um, tech boomers would, be, I guess, be university and Linda would be like, doing your master's or PhD or something like that. And when it comes to different levels of, of difficulty of tech training. So um, yeah, that's, that's a good point for sure. Oh, Kathy has a comment. Uh, she likes the resource on Denver Public Library. Yes, we've been in, in touch with uh, a number of people from there. And um, yeah, they're, they, they do a great job with their digital literacy training and have some really good resources for sure. So I recommend you check that out. So who was Tech Boomers built for? Um, obviously, it was built for people with limited computer skills. Um, given that Tech Boomers is on the internet itself, uh, for someone to start using Tech Boomers, they do need some basic training. We recommend people that know how to browse the internet on a basic level that can use email so they can actually sign up to Tech Boomers. Um, we're focused on the 50 plus market since they are generally the ones that um, do you have limited computer skills versus, you know, uh, the other age groups? Um, but again, we're really focused on anybody um, that has limited computer skills. We say that we're 50 plus adult focused, um, and in that way, we're all of, our, all of our tutorials. And when we use try to use relevant examples, like Facebook will say, um, you know, all the different uses of Facebook, like, you know, seeing pictures of your grandchildren or your children. So that's how we kind of target for the 50 plus adult, but it's really open for anybody. Um, have a couple more comments. Uh, Lafayette State Library has a subscription to Linda for staff, but yeah, very helpful. Yeah, I think other libraries as well have subscriptions for Linda too. Um, I think they do. Um, keeping classes and handouts up to date is so time consuming. Absolutely, and uh, that gets me back to this slide. Um, why we built Tech Boomers? We built it also for tech teachers, people that may be training family or friends how to use technology. But also, as I mentioned early on, uh, for tech training organizations, um, and we'll get into a lot more detail about this, but um, we built Tech Boomers to make the lives of people that are doing tech training easier. And um, again, I'll get into more details about that, um, but that really hits home with um, Jessica's comment that it is very time consuming. So what we're doing, what we're encouraging libraries and nonprofits that do tech training to do is basically leverage our content however you want, whether it's printing up our articles and using them as handouts in your classes, whether it's sharing our videos on a screen, or maybe it's just encouraging people that come into the library to get on a computer and use Tech Boomers to start learning and then maybe being around the, the student to support them when they have questions. So we're trying to do this in a, in a lot of different ways. And uh, yeah, Daniel's right. I, I saw that they updated their digital literacy guide. He sent me an email about that and it has links to a ton of outside sources. So I definitely recommend that. They have a, a whole variety of different categories, um, everything from how to use programs to um, websites, obviously, and then internet safety, I definitely recommend that. Okay, so moving on. Okay, here's the slide. It was a little farther away than I thought to, to that uh, initial question about how we make money. Uh, so the first and most important thing that I wanna say is that um, it is, we've committed, and this is super important to us, that all of our courses will always be free for both our users and our partners. Um, it actually goes hand in hand with, with our marketing strategy, which is we drive a lot of traffic through search engine optimization. So 
as people search for things like how to create a Facebook account or what is Netflix, um, you know, our goal is to rank very high and we're starting to do that on in Google and on the search engines. For us to be able to do that though, we need to make all of our content and all of our pages available to search engine crawlers and spiders so we can actually put, we cannot put our courses and our tutorials behind a paid wall or a user account wall because then search engines wouldn't be able to to find them and then we wouldn't be ranking and we wouldn't get that traffic. So um, that is a definite commitment we're, we're making is that everything will always be free and that's really important to us. Um, how we will be making money in the future, well, we started publishing ads in early August, um, mostly for our partners. We're starting to advertise a couple of the websites that we teach people how to use like, like Match.com and Amazon Prime, although we don't have that course yet, but um, it is one of the options on the poll later today or later in the webinar. Um, but yeah, we really just started kind of playing around with ads to see, you know, click through rates and how they might do in the future. We're not super focused on that. Right now, we're really just focused on putting out a lot of content and building awareness. And then um, as expenses grow over time, so too will we try to generate revenue to cover those expenses. Um, later in 2016, one of our revenue models is to establish sponsorship partners, as we're calling them, uh, for different types of online sites and services. So, for example, there are dozens of ways to stream music online, and we'd be looking to partner with one of them, let's say Spotify, which we already have a course for that we launched a couple weeks ago. We'd be looking to establish basically a sponsorship and a partnership with them, and they would essentially become our official music streaming partner. Uh, we would still provide courses on how to use all of their competitors, but we would advertise them throughout the site and maybe um, promote them in our social media and email marketing, those types of things. Um, and this is this last point on how we make money, it's not a way we will, but it's a way we will not be making money. Um, and that's that we are not and have no plans of selling usage data. That's a question I, I get often when I'm chatting with um, librarians and people in the nonprofit space. And online privacy is very important to them and it's important to our users, so it's important to us. And that's a commitment that we're also making when it comes to um, revenue models in the future. It's not something we plan on doing. So moving on, um, oh yeah, uh, site tour. So we will just bear with me. I'll pull up a browser with Tech Boomers open on the screen. And if anybody has any other questions, it might be a good time to, to type them up if you have any, but here it is. Okay, so here is the, the home page. Um, on my screen, the text seems very kind of pixelated. I don't know if that's it's coming up that way for you guys. Uh, I do apologize for that, but if you go to techdiscoveries.com yourself, you'll see that it's not so bad. Uh, pretty clear to me, Steve. Okay, that sounds good. Okay, cool. So, Sorry about that, guys, I'm back now. Okay, so as I mentioned, if you look across the top, these are the different categories of uh, courses that we offer for different types of websites, um, everything from social, and here are a list of some of the most, most popular social uh, websites out there, Facebook, Pinterest. Uh, we added some new ones recently, Instagram, um, Gmail, and Twitter, and all, all of the most popular ones, and we plan to add more to these in the future as well. Uh, LinkedIn is one that we want to add really soon because we know that that's uh, important for sure and very popular with our audience. Uh, entertainment websites, Netflix I mentioned. Um, one to point out is Overdrive. Actually on a webinar we did uh, a couple months ago, actually with the Ontario Library Association, the one I mentioned earlier today, uh, we let them choose what website we were going to teach next and they chose Overdrive, which is, as all of you know, a very popular uh, service uh, with libraries and um, patrons of libraries. So we created a course around that. Uh, online shopping websites, I'll just kind of open these up really quickly. I won't get too much into them, but yeah, lots of online shopping websites. I've mentioned a number of them already in the previous slides. Uh, educational websites like Wikipedia and Ancestry is another one that I know that libraries uh, support um, people and have like the subscription so that Ancestry can be free for its patrons. Um, which is great because using Ancestry as an individual user can be quite expensive. 
Um, well, we have a question. Zinio for libraries app. Yep, we've had that recommended to us. Uh, it is one that we open, we are hoping to add um, maybe within a couple months for sure. We also have daily living websites. These are kind of ones that make life easier um, from that slide. Google Maps, Yelp, and Dropbox, and Google Search, and lots of good ones like that. Um, we also have a category for um, websites that are focused on older adults. Stitch.net is one of my favorites. They're a relatively new website out of San Francisco. Um, it kind of takes the dating website model, but opens it up to more companionship as well, in addition to romantic relationships. But if you're looking for a companion or a friend to um, do different activities with, whether it's um, going for walks or playing cards or going to the movies or even traveling with, Stitch.net is a great way to connect with um, people in your area in that way. And lastly, um, the Internet 101 section. So here are our courses. We have an intro to the Internet, um, introduction to online safety, a whole course on passwords and how to create strong passwords, and then one on Internet privacy. These are some of our most popular courses and are super important for, um, for our, our readers and our, um, our visitors to, to learn and highly recommend that you you focus on the, you know these topics, which I'm sure a lot of you do, because uh, they're just so important. So those are all uh, a lot of the websites that we teach people how to use. So now, um, about five months ago, four or five months ago, we added the ability for people to create accounts and log and log in and track their progress. So I will log in with one of my accounts right now. Uh, you can log in and, and create an account with Facebook, any Facebook account or a Google account. It saves the trouble of remembering a password and just makes the ability to log in with just one click, which is quite useful for sure. So I'll log in with my Facebook account. Okie dokie, so I'm logged in now. So I will go to the Facebook course. This is one I've already signed up for. Um, we have these notifications uh, that kind of help people and remind them to do different things like um, whenever you create an account on a website, you should verify your email. Uh, I haven't actually done that yet with this account, uh, so we're going to see this message probably on all of the pages. I won't do that now because that'll take a few minutes, but um, don't worry about these. They won't be there if you've uh, confirmed your account properly. So anyways, our Facebook course is, is a great example. It's one of the first ones we launched. Um, so all of our courses, we, we start off with these basic articles explaining um, what the website is, we always have a review of the pros and the cons, a glossary. We also, also cover topics like how much does it cost, is it safe, is it private, is it reliable. Um, basically all the information that you need to make kind of a, a calculated decision of is this a website you're interested in using. Then we get into more topics, um, more how-to topics and kind of how features work. Um, how to create accounts and then we have, you know, as I mentioned, privacy and safety is super important, especially on social media sites and sort of social networks like Facebook. So we have three articles that are all about how privacy works and how to change your settings and Facebook lists, which is a great way to control your privacy on, on Facebook. Um, and then how to use Facebook, which is kind of the, the bulk of a lot of our tutorials or sorry, a lot of our courses, how to use different features. Oh, so we have a question from Kathy. Is this all documents you can read or do you have to you have a video and audio as well. Yes, we have um, for about, we have about 40 plus courses right now. Um, video does take a lot more resources and time and effort to create. So we only have videos for, I think about seven or eight of our courses right now. It is something we do plan on catching up on in the future. Um, but most of the newer courses that we're releasing won't have videos, unfortunately. But like I said, it's something we'll, we'll be working hard probably later this year to, to catch up on because the video is, is important. Um, how often is the content updated? Um, so all of our courses, like I said, we release one new course every Monday. Um, it's difficult for us to consistently monitor all of our you know, courses to you know, double check them that it is up to date. So what we do is at the bottom of all of our pages, we have a, uh, a content or sorry, a comment box um, where you basically use your Facebook account to post comments. So that's where users will, or our users will give us feedback and sometimes they'll contact us via contact at TechLoomers or fill out a contact form to let us know. So we, we really do rely on our, 
our users um, and for feedback from our users when to you know when articles are out of date and when they are we do update them within 48 hours that's something that again is very important to us and in some cases you know, on websites we use like if i notice that facebook changes their home page or their interface we'll update them ourselves and notice that but that's difficult to do when i think we have over probably 600 our, uh, tutorials right now so it's um, quite a few that's for sure uh, so I'll hop right into one of these courses. Well, actually, one last thing to point out. As I mentioned, you can track your progress as you work your way through the tutorials. So whenever a, um, a tutorial box, as I guess we'll call it, it has this green check mark, it, mean, it means that you've completed it. And then this on the right side shows your progress um, along the course. So I've in this account, I've completed eight of 18 tutorials. So I'll go into, let's say, the Facebook sharing tutorial. So you don't have to do any of the tutorials in any specific order. It's totally up to you. Um, so here's a video. Um, if I play it, though, you won't actually hear the volume. So I won't do that, but um, you guys can check them out. They're very clear. Um, yeah, we do our best to, to make them as useful and as um, targeted as possible for our audience. So onto the text version of the tutorial. We have, um, we basically try to cover all aspects in this case on uh, about sharing on Facebook. So status updates, we, we like the bold important words that they have to click on and, and how to use the site. We have, uh, all of our tutorials have a ton of screenshots with bright red boxes that highlight the different areas of that screenshot of that image that you need to see. Um, yeah, so in this case, you know, there's just a lot of content about all the different ways that you can share photos and sharing links, sharing your location, posting on a friend's timeline. There's all the different ways that you can do it. So, uh, and then at the bottom, uh, we have this mark as completed. So once you feel like you've completed, so it's a self-paced course. So you mark them as you feel like you're, you've understood the topic. So I'll do that now and that'll change to a green button. Or at least it should change to, oh, there it goes. So now the tutorial is completed. So if I go, back to the course page, it should say nine out of 18 done. Yeah, so there it is. So it basically just stays up to date as you work your way through. And a um, couple other things to point out, you can share any of our pages um, through these social sharing icons on the left side of the page. Um, they're also at the top of our tutorial pages. Um, you can print the tutorial anytime as well and this is where you would if you want to use our materials for your library this is a great easy way to produce a, a pdf of the tutorial and then you can basically just print it up and, and share it with your with your students you can also use this service to email it uh, as well so it's wow it's already 38 minutes after um, last page I will show is the My Courses page. This is kind of the, um, the hub page that shows you all of the courses you've signed up for and started completing tutorials for. Um, so My Active Courses and then My Completed Courses. I haven't actually completed this, but once you know I, it's 18 of 18 on Facebook, that will move to the bottom and you can access your completed courses from this section. So I'll leave it at that for now. Um, but yeah, I just encourage you to, to check out the website and um, let me know if you have any questions or suggestions. Uh, you can email me at steve at techboomers.com anytime uh, with feedback about how we can improve the site. I'm always looking, since we are such a new website, a new company, always looking to improve it um, from our partners, especially libraries. So getting back to the, um, the slide deck, so onto the kind of why we're here, um, how tech movements can help uh, librarians and libraries teach digital literacy. Um, for one, as I mentioned, it's a great resource just to point patrons towards. Maybe you don't have uh, a, a course or a class to teach the website that they want to learn how to use. If they come in to want to learn how to use Groupon, for example, and maybe you're not familiar with it, so you can't really give them too much advice or you're too busy, you know, just point them towards tech movements, tell them about the website, and um, they can kind of start learning on their own. One of the most important things that I think we're doing for libraries, as I mentioned, is saving them the time of effort of preparing training materials for websites that are constantly changing. Like I said, use our tutorials, print them up, uh, share our videos, 
And, um, you know, our, one of our big goals is to take that burden off of your backs uh, as much as possible. Um, since you don't have to produce the tutorials, then um, you don't have to pay for software to create training videos, kind of a, a side benefit there, potentially. And also, I've, I've learned, I wouldn't, wouldn't have thought of this myself, but a number of librarians have mentioned that Tech Boomers can also be a great training resource for the staff at your library, maybe the ones that aren't as um, experienced using computers. So now we're going into a little more details about each of these. Um, so one of the easiest ways to you know, encourage people to visit Tech Boomers is to add links uh, to Tech Boomers on your website. Um, and to be honest, that is one of the ways, if, if you like what we're doing and you, um, you know, want to do us a favor, scratch our back if you're using our tutorials and you, know, you just think Tech Boomers could be a valuable resource for your visitors, um, linking to Tech Boomers would, does help us quite a bit when it comes to search engine optimization and driving traffic to our, to our site through search. So uh, some of the ways that you can link to Tech Boomers is on the home page, that's uh, kind of a no-brainer. Um, not obviously, you know, you probably are not going to be putting it at the top of your home page, um, but some of our partners have put it in like the side column or in the main section near the bottom. It's, it's just an easy way. Usually they'll put up our logo along with the link. Uh, it's an easy way for users just to spot the link and to access our website through yours. Uh, a footer link is another great way to do it because in a footer, you know, footers appear on every, every page. So it's a great way that you can just say um, to your visitors, go to our website and then go down all the way to the bottom and look for the Tech Boomers link. Uh, a similar way to do that so that it's on every page, I don't have it on here, but it's through our menu. If you have, let's say, a resources um, main menu item that has a drop down, uh, a few of our partners have added us uh, just a link directly to Tech Boomers from that drop down menu. Um, other types, course listings page, this is actually one that some of our nonprofit partners are doing. Um, they are, and this is actually very similar to what Daniel, the link Daniel provided, um, just basically a list of the courses on Tech Boomers um, that you think your visitors would like to, like to access. And the resource that he has is basically a, a huge course listing page and resource page for not just Tech Boomers links, but for GCF Learn Free and a lot of other websites as well. So um, we recommend, yeah, putting together those types of pages can be very useful for your visitors. And then you're, there's your standard resource pages that you already have, um, computer classes. Every library's website have a, a different name for them, which is, which is cool. Um, but computer classes, technology training, online resources, et cetera. And also, if you have resource pages dedicated to uh, seniors or adult programs, uh, Tech Boomers can also be added to those as a, as a useful link for, for people on those pages. And lastly, um, this is, includes links, but also writing blog posts. Um, and one thing to mention is that we do a lot of guest posting for library and nonprofit partners. So if your library has a blog and you'd like us to write some guest posts for them, we'd, we'd be happy to. Uh, we've written over about 25 guest posts so far since we launched for all types of websites. So if you're interested, send me an email at steve at techboomers.com and I will uh, send you uh, a list of all uh, sample blog posts that we've done for our partners and we'll uh, take it from there if, if that's something that interests you, if you like what we're writing. Um, so, recommending and sharing with patrons, as I oh, mentioned. Excuse me, Steve. We yep. had another. We had another question from uh, Samantha. Do the folks uh, creating the content have a background in education? Um, not really. Um, I don't myself. Uh, Corbin, he has um, some experience. He's actually a recent graduate and a fantastic writer. Um, he's really learned on the go and. We, we have worked with a lot of people in the digital literacy space and got a lot of early feedback. So that's been kind of a, a training process with Corbin. Um, he, he does have some experience with instructional, instructional learning. Like, uh, he had a course on that at his school, but I wouldn't say we have a professional background. So uh, for those that do, um, if you have any recommendations on how we can improve them to, to improve our tutorials and courses, uh, please do um, yeah, send me an email directly to my personal. I'd love to have a conversation about how we can improve them. So yeah, recommending and sharing with patrons, word of mouth, um, sharing the you know, information about Tech Boomers in newsletter and social media. Uh, we are producing flyers and postcards and bookmarks that our designers working on hopefully this week and next week, and, but they'll be ready soon. So we can send those to you guys if you want to hand them out at your library or it would be even easier if we just send you a PDF file for a flyer and you could put that up. Um, we're open to a lot of ideas like that. 
And one thing to mention, we also have a weekly email. It's a weekly newsletter that we send out to our partners. We launch our new course on Monday at noon every week. And um, on Tuesday morning, we send out a weekly email to our partners that tells them about the course that we just launched and also recommends other popular courses and tutorials. Our partners actually requested this as a way to know what's going on with Tech Boomers so that they can post about it in social media without having to always be checking our website for what's new. Uh, if you would like to join this mailing list, please email me at steve at techboomers.com and I'll just quickly add you and you'll get the first one next Tuesday morning. So, um, as I mentioned, you know, one of the ways that we're trying to help uh, librarians is um, leveraging our content um, to, in one, in one hand, or in one case, supplement your existing programs with our tutorials. So if you have a course on Facebook that hasn't been updated, uh, your training materials haven't been updated for a while, and you've noticed um, a lot of the, you know, the Facebook interface or the features have changed, um, maybe you can start using some of our tutorials instead and replacing them slowly, and then maybe just eventually just completely using our tutorials you know, the general idea being saving you the time of effort of keeping them up to date. Put that, put that burden on us, because um, we only have to do it once, and we can do that many libraries, you know, if we just keep it up to date on our site, which we plan to do. So um, same goes for the videos. Also, you could um, integrate our, like, the Tech Boomers website and the course functionality with your students um, in your courses, like maybe run a class in which students come in to actually use Tech Boomers and learn on their own, and then you're there to support them. Uh, you can also assign tutorials for homework. Um, to encourage continued learning at home. Maybe you, you have a kind of a two-hour introdu introduction to Facebook uh, seminar where you just talk about the useful features and maybe they create an account. Um, afterwards, once it's done, you can maybe recommend that they go to Tech Boomers and complete the tutorials on Facebook privacy and maybe a couple on how to use features. Uh, it's a great way to kind of get them continuing learning on their own at home. Uh, so in addition to, you know, supplementing your existing programs, you can obviously create new classes and programs with our course content. Um, those are a number of the popular, uh, some of the popular website courses that we offer. We went through them already, so I won't focus too much on this. But again, use our, use our content however you want to, for your courses. And I mentioned this briefly, actually a couple times, but um, in chatting with a number of library partners and nonprofit partners, they saw some opportunity with having a different type of session or a different type of class environment in which um, students are encouraged to come in with their own devices or maybe use a library's device like an iPad or a desktop computer or laptop. And then students simply choose a topic on Tech Boomers and work their way through the tutorials and then ask questions as they come up. Um, that way, you know, one single librarian or digital literacy teacher can teach, you know, maybe up to six. Okay, looks like uh, Steve has temporarily dropped off um, the recording, or at least Steve, if you can hear us, uh, hear me, uh, your audio has dropped out completely. And so this would probably be a good time if you have had questions about any part of the presentation uh, to go ahead and type them into chat. <coughs> Is anyone else here? Yeah, Steve, ah. uh, Steve oh. you, your audio blanked out for uh, like the last uh, 30 seconds. Oh, did it? Can you hear me okay now? Yeah, I can hear you fine now. Oh, okay. Um, so I, I was just talking a little bit about the drop-in classes where um, you can just encourage students to come in and just start using Tech Boomers and learning on Tech Boomers and then supporting them when they have questions. It's a great way to run a class that you don't actually have to prepare any materials for and you can teach more students at the same time and it encourages self-learning. So that's where I kind of left off, I think. So um, one of the last main slides, I added this actually just a couple days ago. Usually when uh, I'm speaking with a, a new potential partner, a librarian or a nonprofit digital literacy teacher, they always eventually ask me, so what's in it for you guys? Um, you know, why are you offering all this content for free? Um, so there's a couple of reasons. One, uh, we just see libraries and other digital literacy um, organizations that do tech training um, in person, just as great long-term partners um, that you know, they can be early adopters, they can help build awareness and recommend Tech Boomers to, um, to their students. So it's just a natural fit in that sense. 
Um, as I mentioned, the, the links are a huge asset for us, so we're always appreciative when our partners uh, like what we do and appreciate um, the content that we're offering. If, if they want to repay us, um, adding a link to their website or multiple links is a great way that, that helps us. Um, but, but overall, I, I think, and this is really important to us, I, I really believe that you know, we're all in this digital literacy space together. And, you know, the more we work together, the more people that will be adopting technology. And, you know, I think there's over about 13,000 libraries in North America, and most of them offer some kind of Facebook training. And for each individual library, essentially 13,000 people, potentially at least, um, creating content for a Facebook course, um, that's just, it just seems so unnecessary if we have all that, you know, we have up-to-date content on our own. So why wouldn't we make the lives of our partners and people, other people that are trying to um, work with digital literacy and, and, and encourage it and teach it. Um, just why wouldn't we do that? You know, it's just something that it's a no-brainer for us. So that's the end of that. So uh, Daniel, if we want to put up the poll, or actually, no, I was going to put up the poll, I think. So um, as I mentioned, we want to let you guys choose between these seven different courses. These are some of the ones that have been most recommended. We do have the content ready, uh, the tutorials ready for a couple of these. Um, so if you guys choose those ones, we, we might even have it up uh, this Monday. But if not, it would be up, it will definitely be up the following Monday. So I will add the poll. Manage panels. Uh, bear with me for a second, please. Okie dokie, open poll. So I think possibly on your interface, you might see the ability to vote right now. Oh, nice, people are definitely doing that. Awesome. So the poll goes on for, I guess we have about five minutes. So um, everybody, I think there's 26 of you, so please start um, voting. And in the, in the meanwhile, or in the meantime, um, I just want to open it up for any other questions. Um, as I mentioned, uh, there's a link at the very bottom, slideshare.net, dash, my username, Steve Black 327 dash, techboomers, dash, or those aren't dashes, those are slashes, I guess, but, you know, you'll see it there, techboomers ASL webinar. Uh, you can access this entire slide deck there. You can download it or just view it from your browser there. And then again, my email address. I love having conversations with librarians that are in the digital literacy space or maybe just those that are interested in digital literacy or want to start doing some, some programs at their libraries. Uh, so please email me anytime. I'd be happy to hop on a call or exchange emails. Um, and with that, yeah, I guess if you have any questions, I'm more than happy to answer them about tech boomers or digital literacy in general, or if you have other recommendations for uh, websites and apps to create courses around. I'd love to hear them. Uh, Zinio definitely looks to be a, a popular one. So, um, yeah, we'll definitely move that up on the list a little bit. Oh, I see Harmony. Hi, Harmony. You have a question. I think you sent that to me privately, though, but you like the idea of having audio available where it can be read to, uh, where it can read the tutorial people. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, totally. The, uh, just having the audio itself would probably be very useful. It's, a, it's an interesting feature. I, I don't think anybody's recommended that. They've liked videos and have recommended more videos in the past, but not just the audio file. That's interesting. Just, uh, just wanted to say that I think it's cool that you list your mom as a staff member in charge of testing. <laughs> well, she was the inspiration for all of this, and she is uh, our number one tester for sure. She um, she doesn't like giving me negative feedback, so a lot of times I have to really tell her to you know just destroy our tutorials and give me all the negative stuff as possible so that we can improve them. But um, she's my mom, so she doesn't like to say that kind of stuff. But she she's a great tester, and um, yeah, some of my aunts and uncles are starting to test more and more now as well. Will you send a live link to the slides and webinar? Um, so I, maybe I'll let Daniel. I will type up the, the link right now in the chat window, slideshare.net. And then I think Daniel is going to be sending out a link to the webinar on YouTube. And then maybe in there he can include, also include the, the link to the slide deck that I'm typing up right now. Let me make sure I got that right. Yeah, it looks pretty good. 
So there's the link directly. You can click from the chat box. Oh, and, and there's the thing too. And I'm hoping to have the recording up uh, by the end of the day, and if not, definitely by Monday. And I'll send a link to Steve so he can uh, post on Digital Learn. Yeah, sounds great. Okay, we have a question from Adam. It's a long one, so I won't read it out loud, but I'll just read it to myself and then answer if it's a whatever you ask. Okay, yeah, that, that's a that's a great question. I think on the, on our one of our recent webinars too, uh, I connected with someone that focuses on teaching digital literacy to the younger generation. Uh, I think lynda.com uh, might actually serve that pretty well. Some of the content on there might be overwhelming. Um, a lot of it, probably most of it will be, but they they do have a lot more basic content, um, like how to use Facebook and you know also like how to use things like Photoshop and um, you know, GCF Learn Free um, with computer skills. I think Microsoft Office is something you definitely want to be teaching. Um, you know, that age group. Uh, GCF Learn Free has great um, courses on those. Um, Lynda.com also has courses on those, but it's paid. I don't know. Couldn't tell you which ones are better, but when one is free and one is not, I'd probably go try out the free one first. Um, yeah, so that's my best advice for that. I'm not sure of any other ones, to be honest. Uh, Jessica asks, any tips on increasing the confidence of new computer users, uh, both confidence in security privacy and in what they're capable of doing? Um, my best advice is just encourage them as much as possible. Um, and, you know, obviously, once they start doing things, um, not congratulate them, but, you know, give them props for, um, you know, for what, what they are doing and what they are accomplishing and just constantly encourage them. And I, I think a big part of it, too, is um, is making things relevant for them, you know, and, and finding websites and apps that really will improve their quality of life in different ways. And the best way to do that is just by having conversations with them and telling them about different websites and apps and just letting them get out there and try things. Uh, when it comes to security and privacy, the best way to build that confidence is just with um, with, with education in it. Uh, so we have uh, some very detailed courses on those that I mentioned in our, in our Internet 101 category. And um, I would just encourage them to read through those as much as possible and I'll always err on the side of caution for sure, especially when it comes to opening up emails from people that you don't know, um, you know, or anything that looks suspicious. Just err on the side of caution. Uh, use tools like antivirus software if they don't know how to, you know, know what they are or how to use them or set them up. You know, bring someone in or ask someone who, who does to set that up for them. You know, I think that will give them a little bit more confidence so that if they do end up, you know, clicking on a bad link, they'll get a warning. And um, Kaspersky is what I use. And if ever I navigate to a dark corner of the Internet um, by accidentally clicking a link that takes you to an unsafe website, uh, they tell me about it right away. Um, yeah. Mouse size. Yes, I've seen a number of those tutorials. Um, Kathy, maybe you can um, provide a link of where they can access that. And another thing too, I forget where I, I heard this or read it or saw it or, or whatnot, but um, starting off with very, very basic computer, um, pro using computer programs, like if they know how to play cards or solitaire, you know, just get, getting someone on a computer playing solitaire and, you know, just clicking around, getting used to the mouse, you know, starting off with those very basic programs that aren't the Internet, so it's not like these scary viruses and securities and issue or anything like that, but, you know, and getting them using, you know, programs like that, mouse or size, I, I'm not sure if that's the one I've heard of or, or seen before, but there's a lot of different ones like that out there. Uh, that, that's my best advice. Oh, and the poll results are in, and it is linked in in a landslide with over 30-something percent of the votes. Okay, and I also have good news because um, we have the tutorials for LinkedIn almost complete. So I think um, Corbin and I will get those finalized this weekend and we will post them up Monday at noon. Um, oh, PBCL. Um, I think is that Palm Beach County? Kathy, is that where you're from? Because um, I've noticed you guys have added some links to us, and I really appreciate that. <laughs> I don't know if I've connected with you directly. I, I chat with so many different librarians that it's tough to remember, but uh, all the names of everybody. But um, 
Oh, okay, you're from Maryland, Never mind. <laughs> Treehouse has some more advanced courses on coding and web design, but it's also paid. Yeah, I've heard about Treehouse, they, they have good stuff. Um, and going back to your question, I guess, yeah, you're sending that right to Adam, I thought actually Adam posted that, but um, I can't recommend enough for people that are, um, you know, in that 17 to 24 uh, age group to really apply themselves as much as possible when it comes to digital literacy, not just, you know, the basics, but using sites like Linda and even Coursera and sites like Udemy, um, you know, people, you, you can really just build skills that can help you find good jobs as well. Um, you know, I, I've met people and read about people that have just only learned how to use um, technology and, and Photoshop and, you know, learn how to do web design just by following courses online. And that's, got them a job and that's that's just fantastic. It's it's free free life skills and digital literacy skills can really make a difference in, in a young person's life. So I certainly recommend that as much as possible. Are there any other questions? I think yeah we're just over an hour now. Um, be happy to answer any other questions if there are any and if not I guess maybe we'll uh, we'll wrap things up. Okay, well, thank you, Steve. I really appreciate the the time you took to uh, come and share about your site and um, explaining your your revenue model and privacy policies because those are definitely things of concern to librarians. So, if there are other are no other questions, uh, we can go ahead and um, and close things out for today. That sounds great. And uh, again, Daniel, thank you for putting this together. Um, it's been great connecting with you and Freya at the Alaska State Library. I appreciate the opportunity. Okay. Thank you very much. So. Uh